longtime friends, Jean, Walter, George, and Bob, have a long-standing tradition of embarking to Bayfield, Wisconsin, on Lake Superior during the third week in January. Always the third week in January for the annual Guys Hard Water Fishing Expedition. The foursome pride themselves on their organizational skills in getting this expedition together and are achieving great success with the objective, catching fish. They figure that between them, they have at least 80 seasons of ice fishing experience. Yep, they go way back. They consider themselves to be pretty savvy fishermen and are always anxious to get the biggest expedition of the season underway. Well, the women, Carol, Susie, Joanna, and Louise, take this opportunity to gather at one home one year and a different home the next in round robin fashion to partake in gossip, food, gossip, <laughs> fine spirits, gossip, and the right passion, scrapbooking, a creative craft involving photographs and all scrapbooks. They may be very amateur photographers, but they like scrapbooking, enjoy getting scrapbooks as gifts, and have turned it into an art form along with their gospel. It is a highly anticipated event for these gals as well. No guys to wait on and no guy grub to prepare. In January 2018, the enthusiastic group met at the home of Jean and Carol Mortimer's on the shores of beautiful Lake Ogibe. Why not fish there, you might be asking yourself. Lake Ogibe provides hardy, hard water fishermen with huge perch. But Morty, as its friends fondly call Jean Mortimer, fishes there all of the time. So 20 some odd years ago, when he and George Murphy, or Murph, and Walter Wallace, Wally, along with Bob O'Malley, who for some reason has not been endowed with a nickname and remains simply Bob, although there is nothing simple about him, started the annual January excursion. Maury demanded that the guys go where he considered the fishing to be more exciting and challenging on that tremendous body of water, Lake Superior. The guys love the thrill of packing it all up and heading northwest for their greatest annual adventure. They talk about it all year, and the time has finally arrived to take stock, the inventory, to ensure the trip would be seamless and uneventful, except for the great event of catching big lake trout. But first, perhaps you would like to meet our fine couples. Let's hear Carol and Jean Mortimer's story. <coughs> Jean, Morty, and I have been together for so long, we're kind of like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. We fit together real well. We're nothing fancy. But we're satisfying and we're satisfied. We're dependable. We're Wisconsinites. I wouldn't live anywhere else or with any other guy for that matter. We've made plenty of good friends. And between our two kids and Morty's big family and work, we don't have much time to worry about tomorrow. We're just too busy. Morty knows that for me to be happy, I've got to have some girl time with my besties. It's all worked out pretty fine. Well, you know, what more is there to say? <laughs> Carol's my gal, my better half. She knows when I need a beer, how hot I like my chili and makes the best wings anybody ever tasted. 
We met our freshman year down at UW Stevens Point. And I took one look at those big guys and decided I wanted to look into them forever. <laughs> Carol gets along with everybody, and if I get out of line, she knows how to straighten me up. <laughs> I appreciate it, and she knows it. Well, I hope she knows it. What Carol said about having time with her friends, well, the same goes for me. The fishing trips I've had with the guys over the years, deer camp, all of that, adds up to some really great memories. And what do they call it now? Male bonding? <laughs> Whatever it is. But me, Wally, Murph, good old Bob, we just had the best time. Let me introduce you to Susie and Walter Wallace. I guess I could talk a little uh, about how I met you, or you want to do that, honey? Oh, Wally, you go right ahead. That's fine. Well, you know, I was feeling kind of down on my luck. Uh, you know how the job can be, and then the girlfriend ditches you, and the job's really not working out. I was just at a really bad point in my life, and my buddies really just couldn't shake me out of it. Well, I got How did we meet? Oh. Remember our story? Our story. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> well, I didn't feel like doing much of anything, and then Bob and Louise had this big fling on 4th of July bash at their first place, and I was talking to Bob and kind of wishing I wasn't even there, and then Louise says, Wally, I've been thinking about you a lot, and I just want you to meet and take a chance on my new friend Susie. Well, I have to tell you, Susie wasn't in the game plan for that day at all. <laughs> you made it pretty clear that I wasn't, Wally. <laughs> but we got to talking, and you liked that I was a kindergarten teacher. Maybe my job made you less threatening. I liked that you were easy to talk to, and you really listened to what I had to say. So we started dating right then. Yep, I never believed in love at first sight until that day, but there you have it. And I never regretted asking you to join the bowling league next time around. <laughs> we made quite the team, and we still do today. Three kids later and still going strong. <clears throat> We've just been the luckiest <clears throat> ever with our family and all our friends. Why, Wally, how do we make it through the hard times? our friends. We know who to call in good times and bad. Lucky us. Still love you, Wally Bear. <laughs> Joanna and George Murphy have a different story to tell. Murph and I don't have a story quite like that. I was married and divorced and living it up in Manhattan, doing things financial that seemed like more than a foreign language now. I was on an evening out with the girls from work, and we were standing in line to see the Manuel Brandis in the Heights. The line had looped around, and we were standing next to some guys, and one of them looks at me and says, I like you. Where are we going to be sitting? And can I take you out after the show? I had this funky, spiky hair and makeup that I certainly don't wear anymore. And this clean dress that I would be caught dead in now. Yeah, Joey looked like a million bucks. <laughs> 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 Sounds like it. <laughs> I mean, the circumstances, when would I ever run into her again? I decided to take my chances. I was in the brokerage business at the time and decided to take a gamble. In this situation, I had absolutely nothing to lose. No money on the table. My instincts were right. 
She wasn't just a great looking gal. <clears throat> she is a really good person. We met up after that show with her entourage and just me. That was okay. We started dating after that. Kirk was as good a guy as I ever would hope to meet. My ex was rich and spoiled, but not Murph. Heck, he cooks most of the time and cleans up after our daughter and himself. And he has the best sense of humor. He has this great laugh. It's big and deep and loud. I just love it. I don't necessarily believe in star-crossed lovers, but to meet up in Manhattan the way he did was certainly fate. Well, Joey did me the honor of marrying me. Pretty soon that hurried, frantic life in the Big Apple just turned into overblown chaos. We both decided we had it. So we headed back to Green Bay and Packerland, my hometown. Joey was fine with that, and we made a good life. Our last couple, Louise and Bob O'Malley, you're going to like them, too. Jeez Louise! <laughs> oh, I know you hate when I say that, Louise, but, you know, we're rather boring compared to eating and whining and dining in Manhattan, star-crossed and all that, or me doing a Louise sighting and, you know, a Love at very first sight. Well, really, sweetie, we're pretty lame. <laughs> you lived a couple of houses down on my street, even on the same side. I was a few years younger. And you were in my brother Ryan's class, remember? But lucky for me, you two never dated. Oh, Bob, Ryan was just like a brother to me. You know that. You don't have to be star-crossed or anything else. We are the American dream. <laughs> oh, think about it, Bobo. Love about life. <laughs> oh, we've known each other forever. We've got all the dirt on each other and each other's families. Oh, we have dished out all kinds of dirt over the years. Oh, from our family history. But we are solid. And still in love. Yes, we are. <laughs> Even if I am just the girl down the street. Come on, Louise. You know I've never had eyes for anybody else. You know, I'm sorry I packed on this beer belly over the years. <laughs> 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 I'll try to do something about it, but not until after that hard water fishing trip in January. I mean, I promise this time. But you gotta stop making all those ribs. I just can't resist those in your pies. I mean, give a guy a break, Lou. Oh, are you kidding me? You make that same resolution every year, Bob. Eh, it's fine. No worries about that. Little Will, not so little beer belly. You are my guy. And I am still crazy about you. All I want is for us to stay healthy and retire in a few years. Maybe we can get a place on Lake Oneida. Close to Carol and Marty. Wouldn't that be something? Then we continue the rest of the eight and to convince the rest of the exceptional eight to join us. Fishing for you? Scrap for me. Oh, Pretty lovely down home, salt to the earth, my kind of people. I knew you would like them too. Now that you know them, let's get on with the story. Carol, hey Carol, everybody's just pulling up to the driveway now, they made it. Let's have a quick chilly lunch and then the guys can get on with the packing. I'm gonna run out and give them a hand. Sounds good to me, Morty. Tell the girls to come on in. Gert, Bob, Wally, hey, 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 it's that time of year again. 
So y'all made it up in good time. Just haul the gear into the garage and then we'll get on with, or we'll have, we'll go up for some of Carol's world famous chili. Girls, Carol's waiting on you up in the kitchen. The exceptional eight had a mighty fine chili lunch with all the fixings, and the guys decided to get organized for the big trip. Alrighty then, I brought a case of PBR. That'll do us with the old Milwaukee, right, Bob? Yeah, I remember. Same as last year, two cases of old mill, and Murph got the Bud Light. Same as always. If my memory serves me right, Morty, you got the May Gager Meister to top it all off. What do you take me for? Of course I got it. Same as always. But maybe we ought to think about the rest of the gear. We gotta do a little hard water fishing now. We're drinking up that beer. <laughs> now, Morty, you always had that checklist. So where'd you put it? Right here in my bib pocket. Safe and sound. Where I stashed it last year. You mean? Those bibs haven't been washed since last year? <laughs> Come on, Morty, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I wash the bibs, the list would be ruined. Ah, uh, here it is. Right where I knew it would be. Get it here. I'm going to read this and, and check it off the list, and you guys make sure we got the stuff, okay? Are you guys ready? Right, here yep. goes. All right. Cigars. Yep. Butane lighters. Yep. Hand warmers. Got it. Electric socks. Yep. Blankets. You bet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when are you going to get to the fishing gear? <laughs> we are going fishing. We need those big hockey puck lures going way down deep. 250 feet. We got them, right? I'm getting there, Murph, but yeah, we got them. Okay. Propane. Yes. Propane heater to go with the propane. That too. The old reliable Weber drill. You know, how long have you been taking that black drill there, Morty? A lot of years, Bob. Let's keep going with that list now. Charcoal. Yep, charcoal for the grill. Yep. Ice picks. Got them. All right, got to take care of there. Yeah, there was that year where it was creaking and cracking pretty good. And, and somebody could have gone... Right straight through. So you want to be wearing those things to claw your way out because you can't be too careful, don't you know? Give me the apple bliss, Bob. We got to get through this thing. Get it on over. <clears throat> Tip boats. Ah, uh, yeah. Ice auger. Yep. Fishing rods. Got them. Depth finder. Absolutely. Bait. And bait? <laughs> bait? Mm -hmm. What? No bait? Ah, uh, shoot, Wally. I was so excited about getting here that I just forgot to stop. Sorry, guys. Ah, uh, no biggie. We can get some over in Ashland on the way up. Keep going, Wally. Um, head wraps for each of us? Here, right here. Okay. Coleman lanterns? Got them. Alrighty then. Everyone remember the food assignments? And somebody did bring the coffee? We got tents and myrrh. You got the ice shack on your snowmobile trailer. Bet's your bottom dollar I do. And you got your five-gallon bucket to, to sit on instead of standing out there, right, Bob? Yeah, I don't know how anybody can stand being in one of those ice shacks all cooped up, playing solitaire if you aren't catching anything. Oh, ah, wait a minute now. Each to his own, I always say. Let's get this gear packed up and into my truck. If we have to break up those cases of beer to stash them around the inside of the truck, let's just do it. Can't leave a beer behind. <laughs> hey, nobody read out the first aid kit or the fire extinguisher. We got them right, Wally. Yeah, yeah, no worries. We got them right here, both of them. Hey, there was that year, maybe five or six years back, where we actually used that fire extinguisher. <laughs> My memory serves me right up. There was some money plates over that whole Weber grill, and oh Bob, he grabbed that fire extinguisher and went at it. Hey, no meat that night. Yes, Wally, please you to bring up that no meat that night thing again. Give a guy a break and lay off. No more talking like that, guys. New year, new trip. 
Let's get that gear in the truck, and somebody make sure we got all that gear in the road. We gotta stop for a bait in that one. No two ways about it. Hard water fishing, here we come. Carol, we're such an instigator, and I know you've got 
something up your sleeve. I have a bad feeling about this, but I'm willing to listen. Let's have it. All I am suggesting is that we just get in the car tomorrow, drive up to Bayfield, and have a look-see. It's not that far, and the weather, oh, it's going to be beautiful. A perfect day to drive up the Bayfield Peninsula. The guys will be shocked, to say the least. We can have a look-see, cheer them on. What do you say? Yeah? I guess the kindergarten teacher in me is just wanting to stay here in color cut and paste. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you could tempt me with a visit to that great spot in Washburn, Coco's, for some great homemade bread and soup. And, and we could give the guys a great pie to share on the ice. I told you Carol had something up her sleeve. I'm just happy hanging out here. But I never want anyone to say I'm a party pooper. What do you say, Louise? Oh, I'm just wondering what the guys will think when the four of us scrapes across that hard water to get a glimpse of the amazing trout they have undoubtedly caught. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> I am not picturing photo-worthy smiles and exuberant greetings. But I'm in. What the heck? Yeah, I'm a go. Maybe some of the shops in Bayfield will be open too. Okay, Coco's in Washburn, and I'm in. Great. Let's start scrapping and head on out tomorrow morning and make that stop in Washburn. Chardonnay or Pinot Noir, ladies? <laughs> The guys set up a few steps off the Madeline Island Ice Highway, which is marked by evergreen trees, so drivers of cars and trucks can follow the correct route. The journey across the frozen waters of the world's largest freshwater lake is roughly two miles, and is not, may I stress, not for the faint of heart. The road is monitored many times daily to assure its safety. Those evergreen trees, if necessary, might be moved to create a different route. So I am told. Morty has been on the ice highway, an official United States highway, many, many times. And he decides if they should proceed with the rig and where they should set up. They always had outstanding luck both in being able to walk on the ice and catching lake trout. Ice is tricky though, changes occur fast and frequently. There is often no rhyme or reason for things heading south. Mother Nature always makes the call. Shade ice beers is always a treat. <laughs> the first night's in the record books, men, and a mighty fine night it was. Gee, Lord, when did you become such a poet? I mean, here I am, I'll chill to the boat after dunking my leg in that fishing hole. The hole shrunk that last night, and I didn't even notice it. And there you are, singing like a nightingale about perfect everything. Next year, we're putting extra boots and extra socks on that list. Yeah. I know I'm not the one with the frozen leg. No complaints for me. Catching that Laker on my new Cumberbird Flasher. Man, that was the most excitement I've had in years. Sworn to secrecy on that, guys? What do you think? 22 pounds or so? <laughs> hey, Bob, Morty. We're never going to hear the end of this. The fish story had to be from the guy who recites the biggest fish stories in the history of fish stories. Me? No way. But I'd like to celebrate with the first brewski of the day. Join me, fellas. No spoiled sports here. You'll get yours. Hey, hey. Wally. Bird. Warning. You know, look 
out there. It has to be a mirage. I mean, those four gals walking up that mountain. They look a bit familiar. Or, or I need my vision check. Well, what? Well, I'll be a son of a gun. Nah, can't be. Ay, ay, ay. I never thought I'd see this in a million years. It's them. What do we do? <laughs> do? Nothing. There's no wine out here and no table to scrap on. They're going to be too cold and let just the last a couple of minutes. True. True. Well, what do you think? Maybe something's really gone wrong. <laughs> Would have sent the cops out here to find us if it had. Sit tight. They're getting closer. Just smile and keep fishing. <laughs> We'll get in the shack and let Bob talk to him until he freezes on his bucket. <laughs> Ladies, there they are. Oh, and one of them. Well, me the rest are in the fishing shack. I can't wait to see the looks on their faces. Mort will not believe that we're here and that it was my idea. <laughs> Carol, this is downright painful trudging on this ice highway. I'm so nervous. I can't imagine why I agreed to this. We can just go straight through the ice, and you won't. Oh, not going through the ice. It must be eight feet thick, you know? <coughs> this may not go well. The guys were expecting four days without women folk, and we show up in effect to crash their party. And Murph enjoys this time alone with the guys so much. Carol, we can simply turn around and head back and pretend that we never acted on your surprising idea. I've got a cold case of cold feet. <laughs> <laughs> now our mission is almost accomplished. Be optimistic. We are showing the guys that we care about their fishing expedition and want to share in it. Forward march. The ladies continue following the trees marking the ice highway. Susie still fears the worst and is the most reticent to carry out this crazy scheme. Her view of it now. Scrapbooking in line never looks so good. <laughs> the other gals are fortified by the sunny day, their scrumptious meal at Coco's, and the excitement of acting on an impulse, taking an adventure together. Well, here goes. I guess we'll see what happens next as boys meet girls. <clears throat> well, what do we have here? A mighty surprise. No, I'm shocked to see it. Hey, something happened back at the house? No, no, no. no. Wow. 
wiry minds want to know. <laughs> What's that little red flag doing out there on the wall? <laughs> they come in different colors. <laughs> how many holes do you dig? And how do you do it? A flag means a fish. I hope we didn't miss it with all this gabbing going on. I'll pull her up and see if we got one. Hey, hey, I'm feeling something pretty heavy here. We may have cooked us a big one for the ladies. Take it slow. Can't rush a good thing. I'm getting the big net. Keep reeling, buddy. Keep her coming. Patience. Oh, what just happened? <laughs> Did you lose her? Damn. If we brought that one up, the girls would have just seen a big catch. And, and then they could have just turned around. <laughs> See, I knew we shouldn't have come. They don't like our surprise, and right now they don't especially like us. <laughs> Sorry, Wally Bear. Oh, come on, guys. The girls just wanted to hang out with us for a bit, and we're ruining their fun. It's okay, Susie. Why don't you have a beer with me, and I'll show you the shack. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's gonna help us. 
Mother Nature's had her say. We're on an ice flow, and we are actually moving away from the ice highway. Man, that seems, well, simply impossible. Why don't we stay in your place, Carol? Oh, but then the guys would be out here alone. What are we going to do? Oh, man. All right. Hey, we got some flares in the truck. Let's get those. All right. Somebody's got to get them and realize that something bad is going on down here. Yeah, I'll get the flares. It's a big piece of ice we're on. That's good, I guess. We got all our gear and the truck. It looks like we're on an island. <laughs> Lake Superior. 
superior and we're floating away. Crazy, right? No, we're not on snowmobiles. We were ice fishing along the ice highway and the storm kicked up. We broke away from the highway. We're on an ice floe, like a moving island. No, I haven't been drinking. <laughs> well, maybe a couple of beers, but you gotta believe me. You'll call me back? What if I suddenly lose service? Not to worry, this happens all the time. I don't think so. Don't hang up, please. All right. We all heard Wally's call, and it's up to us to remain calm. Calm down, Wally. We'll give it 10 minutes or so, and then we'll call again. In the meantime, let's get as warm as we can. We'll shoot off the flares every now and then. We got plenty of gas in the truck and extra if you need it. We can take turns in there to stay warm. So the gals, why don't you go first? Hard to be calm. It looks like we're moving faster. This honestly can't be happening here. Carol, are you taking pictures? Carol, <laughs> <laughs> of course I am. Just think of the incredibly unbelievable scrapbooks we'll be showing our friends and family. <laughs> Saying this, but 
I don't know if my insurance is going to cover my truck <laughs> or our gear, but you know, Morty, that's the very least of it all. I mean, really, man, it's our lives here. There can always be another truck. I know, I know, and I am so grateful, but really, man, my truck. <laughs> <laughs> this has got me wanting to sing out to hallelujah. <laughs> Look at that chopper up there hovering over us. This guy dangling from it, bringing down what looks like a rope and I don't even know what all. <laughs> anyway, the girls are going to go up first. We're going to make it. We are going to make it. I don't mind telling you all those 911 calls had me believe that we were going to be stuck out on, on this lake until supplies ran out and we froze to death. What a weird and freaky hard water fishing trip this has turned out to be. This was a big hard water misadventure. Most hard water fishermen have much smaller fish stops. The gang never stopped talking about this hard, hard water fishing trip. Carol shared her pictures with Louise, Julie, Joey, and Susie, who did calm down eventually after shedding a few tears on Wally's parka. The question on your minds is, did the annual January hard water fishing trip on Lake Superior continue? After Morty got his brand new truck, same name, same model, same color, because uh, <laughs> a man loves his truck. <laughs> the guys decided to just take it on. They got together for a long January weekend on Lake Obedi and stayed with Carol and Morty. The gals would have preferred to have the guys stay off Lake Superior forever. But old habits die hard. The following year, they packed with a little extra care for any misadventure that could possibly occur. Bob remembered to bring extra boots and socks, and a good thing, as he did dip a leg into a small ice over hole one morning. Their legend lives on. Even fishermen would have a tough time making a bigger fishtail out of this hard water misadventure.